Hey TSG, this is Ben. Today we're working on the second Zorner play that's represented by the this piece of the Vezetal that goes be stronger against in turn if he sees the thrust go low. What we're going to do is start with the same Zornort, and we're going to start before we get into that distinguishing between the first Zornort and the second Zornort. So the first bit of the Zornort, which we've talked about in previous videos, is um, us cutting and then assuming in this case that we're going straight into that thrust. And that's not a bad assumption to be working on, at least at first, is committing to that Zorn and immediately pressing that thrust in. Um, if he holds stronger against the sword, that doesn't work. Um, usually because he's, and it's not a matter of, of I think, of pressure, fuel and pressure in the horizontal. It's a matter of fuel and pressure usually in the vertical. So you're coming in to do that Zorn art, and or vice versa, because it actually works both ways. If, you're, if he's doing a Zorn against you, you squeeze against it. Regardless, one of you is attacking, and one of you in the defense, rather than, or in the offense, rather than the offend, person in the offense swinging all the way through for just this wild, like, over cut through, right? Instead of that, um, they realize that they need to hold the center, and they squeeze strong into that center. So the first Zornor play works really well when the attacker comes in from above, kind of cuts, cuts through, down, um, and continues with that full range of motion cut. At any point where they stop to squeeze and hold that center defensively, um, the first Zorner play doesn't work, which I think is a lot of reasons why people are like, I can never make it work. It's because the situation isn't always appropriate for it. So we are starting here. We're doing, assuming in this case that our attacker is starting with that, that full cut through and at some point squeezes strong into a long point to kind of hold that center. And what that means is that he's going to hold that attack before it kind of completes the arc, and it usually tends to make a higher bind than you would typically have. In the first Zornor, as I'm defending, I'm receiving it generally on my strong and pulling it downward. At the end of that play, I almost always have my tip right extended in front of me, tip up here, face, upper chest area with their sword, the bind a little bit lower. If they squeeze the strong against it, it ends up being higher. So it ends up being about here instead. So what we're going to do is we're assuming that this is the difference between the first Zornor play and the second, is that as they squeeze, that, that, ra that bind raises. And as a result, I can't go straight in. If my bind is up here, my sword is probably up like this against them. And what that means is, is that I go to, to thrust, my tip is not straight down threatening this box of their body anymore. It's now pushing upward. So I'm going to raise my sword up and wind instead. And to bring that tip from above downward into them. Or straight into the face, for that matter. So we're doing that Zorn. We're assuming here that the case that our, our full cut is interrupted and we're in a higher bind. Before I engage the legs at all, I'm doing hands only. I'm already in range to hit him. I don't want to engage my body too. I want to work the upper body first. Um, so you have a fast unchain again, and chain the upper body and lower body, especially when you're in that closer range because you need to come in quicker and react quicker. So I'm here. I'm winding up into that thrust immediately. It ends up being boom, rough. And then I'm going to do is after I've made that thrust, after I've extended for that thrust, then I let my leg fall into place as usual, as we always do. It ends up being there, thrust. Now there's some, depending on which text you're reading, you can also do that wine to the outside, too. In some cases, I think it's more explicitly done to the outside, and that's fine. Honestly, it works either way, um, with some differences. Like if someone's really pushing, the outside works a little better, but in that case, there's other things you can do, too. So, as well, you could go here, interrupt it high, wind to that outside, and thrust. When I do the outside wind, my, if I'm doing this, my foot, my right foot is off and back. So I can do a shuffle step, forward, or broken step. Any kind of step where you're doing kind of doubling up that footwork makes, is fine for that. Or simple step forward with the, foot, with the front foot works as well, too coming into that high thrust as fast as you can. Or on either side. So then you're working that, you're changing that bind. That bind becomes, instead of us thinking horizontal fulin, like we learned in the first Zornor play where we cut and cut around from pressure, um, 
hard soft pressure in the horizontal plane, we're now thinking about hard soft pressure in the vertical plane because that bind is already higher. So if they defend that, if any, no matter how you do that, whether that's a, a wind to the open end or the crossed arm side, um, if you seize that thrust, you're going to go low. Uh, Lichtenauer typically uses a low thrust as an example, but it doesn't have to be necessarily. I think 3227A has an example, if I remember right, of a cut down low as well for in that case. And I don't think there's any reason why you shouldn't be able to do a cut as well. Well, there are reasons, but tactical choices we can get to later. So um, we're going to start with the same thing. Zorn, it's interrupted high. We've wound to that high thrust and it gets pushed aside. And now I'm going to go low. And it could be a simple matter of moving my tip around. So moving that tip, so I cut, I wind high. I roll that tip just in a nice circular, circular motion, kind of clear their cross and thrust low. Roll the other side as well. Doesn't matter. Again, we're dealing with concepts, so I, I see the text as giving us examples of ways to express certain concepts. You have to be faithful to the concept, um, but there are ways that can be applied differently that are probably not going to find examples of in every single text or in most of the texts that we have surviving. And the concept is what Lichtenauer says, uh, be stronger against, and if he sees the thrust, go low. And then you get all these examples of texts on how to make that work, but there's a lot of different ways you could make that same concept work, aside from the ones that maybe Ringak or um, any of the other uh, writers, the glossers, um, come up with. So we are going to go thorn high, wind low. I could feasibly do it with a thrust. High, or cut, sorry. A cut low, high. All I'm doing now is kind of doing a load sphere. It's there to the flug, or an unter, depending on how you want to phrase it. Up, low. I go for that high thrust. It's not coming in and immediately moving into the low again to low. Again, I'm using my arms first. I'm already close enough to hit him. My feet are there for stability now, not for closing that distance. So I'm, boom, here, there. My foot will come second, kind of keep my stability. You see a lot of this cross-body positioning in a lot of the illustrations that we do have, like Tolifer, for example. We're coming through here. All right, so that's it for that. Um, thanks.